I was just annoyed, man, because this should be really simple, and then it wasn't. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new video. So, as you are aware, I have recently finished a massive project, which was my four year, which was a recreation, or as best as I could have a recreation, of the breeze dress from the Ever After film starring Drew Barrymore from, I think it's 1998, something like that. So that was a very big project. There are videos on that project here on the channel and lots on Instagram if you'd like to see it or more about it. What I'm getting at is that I need simple projects for a little while. Not a long time because I can never do that for very long. But for now, I want little projects, small projects. And recently something that came to mind is that I could use an apron. <laughs> So if you're new on the channel here, I have made two aprons on a channel and in my life. Um, one of them is a very simple rectangular apron where I was playing with sort of trying to waterproof it through beeswax and there was a big, big issue with that. And then the other one was making a really cute like cottagecore inspired apron for my friend uh, from hand dyed uh, fabric. Obviously that apron I didn't get to pick to keep so I still need one and I really wanted it to be like a really cute cottagecore thing but still something that I could wear you know when I'm cooking or in the garden or whatever I don't do a lot of like other stuff but it'd be great for household chores and even for you know photo shoots and things like that so the vibe for it is that this is not going to be a historical apron this is going to be a cottagecore inspired apron that has some romantic sort of historical inspired design lines and for this, I will be using a commercial pattern. Can I find it? A commercial pattern. It doesn't look like much, does it? So this is the uh, Pansy Apron by Stitch Maiden. I have never used any of their patterns before. Um, and just full disclosure, this is not sponsored by Stitch Maiden, but they did very kindly gift me the pattern for me to test out and I will be giving you my honest opinion about how it comes up, how the instructions work out and what it looks like in the end. So I'm very excited to use it because the design looks exactly like the kind of thing I want. It looks like a very simple pattern. There are a couple of details like ruffles and um, there's a front with a pin tuck option that you can pick. Um, but otherwise, pretty straightforward, a rectangular skirt. I'm gonna add a couple of ruffles just to make it a little bit more interesting. Um, but that is included in this as well. There's like little ruffles at the shoulder. I might add one for the hem. And yeah, I think we should just get straight onto it. So the goal for today is just to cut it out because it's already quite late in the day and I don't think I can manage anymore. But that's what I'm going to do. And I wanna show you very briefly the fabric that I got for this. Um, so obviously this is meant to be like uh, not only a display garment, but like a wearable garment. And so for this, I got this linen and cotton blend, which is a hard wearing sturdy fabric, which I think would make a really good apron. I bought this while I was in Edinburgh um, and it was a little bit pricey. So I, I got three meters of it. I probably could have used with a little more if I really wanted to make decadent ruffles, but alas, it was a little bit pricey. I think it was 12 pounds a meter or something. So I really didn't want to get more than what I thought I would absolutely need. And when I saw it, the first thing that came to mind was very much a cottage core um, inspired apron. So that's how you know you're on the right track. So I'm not even going to make a mock-up for this because it's a very simple shape. All I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out my fabric, which has, by the way, been pre-washed, and I'm just going to cut it out. I'm just going to cut it, cut it out and get it on the machine. Hello. Please excuse this very awkward angle, but I was about to shoot some aesthetic footage of me cutting out this pattern, and I thought I would show you a trick in case, um, you also struggle with this if you do something like this. So the main pattern piece is this big rectangle, which is for the apron skirt. And you may notice that it says cut one on, of the main fabric with the center, fa center front on the fold. So the purpose of doing this is so you don't have a seam going down the center front of your apron, which although more practical in terms of cutting economically is not the most aesthetically pleasing thing. However, you may notice that when I lay out my pattern on my fabric with the traditional fold, that my pattern is not wide enough. My pattern is not wide enough to cut it like this. Don't despair. You can finagle this. <laughs> it's an awkward angle. What am I doing? Okay. So the way you can do this is by cutting this on what's called the cross grain instead. So you just have to change the fold of the fabric. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put away my pattern piece for a second and undo this fold. So this fold is very traditional is when you put the two salvages together. But instead, I'm going to fold it along the length of the fabric, creating a new fold. And then I just need to double check. This is about right. And it is. So yeah, back to aesthetic footage. Just, just so you know, just make a new fold. I didn't realize I could do that until way later into my sewing adventures. <laughs> stitching day and by that I mean the only day in the week where I have four hours where I may sew. So I'm trying to do as much of this apron as I possibly can all in one go. It should be pretty easy construction. So the first step, um, I actually wanted to mention the instructions are lovely. You guys know I live for the aesthetic and these instructions are just beautiful um, and really comprehensive. So there's um, cutting instructions, there's lay so layout for the cutting instructions, there's you know all kinds of seams and finishes and clippings and, and pressing. Like it's really really comprehensive and really useful and beautiful. <laughs> Which always helps with making me read something. Um, the first step for this is to take your uh, bodice front which should look like this. I am doing view A, which is the one without the pin tucks and with the ruffles. You should have two of these and then you need to take your straps, which are just really long rectangles of fabric, which should look like this, and you should have four of those. So the first step is to show the, sew the shoulder seam of the, uh, the bodice bit to the straps on both. So you make, you make two of these. I imagine, I haven't read, it's recommended that you read the whole of the instructions before you start, but I just, it's a miracle I'm following any instructions at all. So that's what I'm going to do. Assemble the shoulder seams with the straps, and then I'm going to press them. And um, one of these will be lining. That's what I imagined. One of them will be inside. And for that, I actually had one with a seam. So the front panel is meant to be cut on the fold, but I didn't have enough fabric. So I cut it with a seam and just sew that seam. And this will be the lining, so it'll be on the inside, so it won't be seen. And yeah, so just got to do that. And then, then you work on the ruffles. So, um... So you hem the unnotched side first, then you add a gathering stitch, you gather that up, you stitch that into the shoulder seam, and then you sandwich that in between. Yep, that makes complete sense. So I'm going to go and do those steps. It should be really quick. I really want to do as much of this as possible. So let's go.
Okay, so I think that's the bodice mostly completed. Um, it looks really cute, really nice. I'm very happy with that. And then the straps just continue all the way around. So the next step, step is actually to move on to the pockets and I've picked these big patch pockets. Um, so the way the pattern, the instructions tell you to do it is that you should make or purchase your own bias binding and bind this edge, which is the pocket slit. I don't have any suitable binding or I didn't. I don't really have enough fabric of this to left over to make bias binding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this really narrow linen tape here and I've just folded it in half and I've curved it gently with the iron so it'll be easier to sew down and then I'm just going to pin this in place and then top stitch and that should work the same way. So I think it's been a hot second since I've done some late night sewing here on the channel but alas that is all the time I have. Um, daylight time is in high demand at the moment. So I, the next step in the skirt after the pockets are finished, as you can see they look pretty nice, I've done the seam allowance inwards. Um, what they recommend that you do is you trace out the marking of your pocket and then you're just going to position it, pin it. They recommend you baste it. I might do this, I might not. And then you just top stitch it into place along the edges. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. You don't technically have to top stitch it, top stitch it across the top because that's going to get caught in the waistband. So yeah, just going to sew up some pockets and I'll be back. Hello everyone and welcome to daytime sewing again. Um, I'm really unhappy with my hair. My bangs are like starting to grow out and I don't want to cut them again but now it just looks like this. Anyway, we're getting really close to the end of this apron. It's been so easy to make. I am so pleased with how, how quickly it's come together. Um, but I have decided to stray from the pattern in one aspect and that is that I'm going to add a ruffle to the bottom of the apron because I think you'll match the little shoulder ruffles that come with the pattern really well. So I'm just going to do it. I did carefully cut out my pieces when I first cut out this, the main pieces to leave a, a long rectangle uh, because that's just what a ruffle is. It's just a long rectangle that's got gathered down to fit a different size. So I did very carefully do that and then I just cut out a very long rectangle. In this case it worked out that it was the exact length, uh, whole length of the fabric that I bought which was three meters. So I have exactly three meters of this, which is thankfully exactly twice the length of the bottom of the apron. So it's going to be a really nice full ruffle. So all I did was I cut out a rectangle and then I folded it in half so that the bottom edge is just a fold. I sewed the two open ends together and then I did two rows of gathering stitches across the top. In case you're new to sewing a gathering stitch, is just the longest stitch setting on your machine. Um, it is recommended that you do two, you can get away with one, but two will just make nicer gathers that look a bit more evenly distributed. The next step is to gather it down to fit the bottom of the apron. And for that, I've just marked the middle of the bottom of the apron with a pin. And I'm gonna mark the middle of the ruffle as well, align that uh, with pins, like vertical pins, and then align the edges, and then I'm just gonna gather it to fit. Uh, the reason I do this, you can even go a bit further and do quarters if you want, but it, it just ensures that the volume of the ruffle is distributed equally. I think this is fine because it's not a very full apron, it's going to be gathered anyway. So I think we're very close to the finish line, so all I have to do left is uh, gather down the ruffle, sew it down, finish that seam somehow, and then attach your waistband, connect the pieces, sew on some loops. I think I can get it done in a few hours, so let's go! Thank you. 
it has been a little while since I've checked in, and for that I'm sorry, but the last thing that happened, I told you I was going to gather the ruffle, which as you can see, well we can't, but it is on. But basically, what happened was, I should have thought, th th thought it through better, because I used the wrong sewing machine for the gather gathering stitches. So my Zynga 185K, which is like the more vintage machine that I love, the smallest, the largest stitch on it is still quite small, and so it will only really gather lightweight fabrics, like, or one layer, so as the ruffles on the shoulder. But the hem is two layers of this, like, linen cotton blend, which is quite thick. And so the thread snapped when I was gathering it. I mean, yeah, I should have thought of that. And then I thought, don't have time for this, I'll just do it the quicker way. I always forget I have a gathering foot. Let's use that. So I spent like an hour messing around with a gathering foot and a ruffler foot only to find out the fabric was too thick for both of them and I couldn't get it to work and then eventually I put as a last Hail Mary before I had to hand sew <laughs> six meters of gathering threads I decided to pull out my more than machine and sew them with that on the longest stitch which is 4.5 and that worked great it was still a bit iffy at certain points but as long as I was really careful and sew I managed to gather it and then I just sew that to the hem of the skirt um, just as a normal seam, and then I finished the inside with an overlocker because by that point I was done. <laughs> I was just annoyed, man, because this should be really simple, and then it wasn't. <laughs> and obviously that's not a pattern thing; that's a me thing. Um, whatever, it's done. So the it's actually not done. It might look done, but it's not. I have a couple of things to finish. So I have the waistband to finish, which is the inside. So actually, I'm really impressed with this pattern because instead of telling you just to finish your seams and like. Sometimes that can be a bit of a hassle and really time consuming. They strategically provide you with some extra pattern pieces. So like the inside of the bodice is lined and the inside of the waistband is lined, which covers a bunch of the most like fraying or dangerous seams. Um, and it finishes it really nicely. So I'm impressed with that. I need to, I'm going, it's not in the instructions, but I'm going to understitch the waistband so that it's just, make sure it sits on the inside. And then there's a bit at the back where you have to add little loops to the back so that I think these tie through the loops, something like that. But it's looking really damn cute. So I'm very excited for that. I'm gonna go finish the waistband. It should literally take, <laughs> please, please don't let it take very long. Um, yeah, usually I make things take way longer than they need to. <laughs> because as I've edited this video I realised I didn't film an outro. So I think I did, but I, I, might, I might have lost it. So here are some overall thoughts. The pattern was really nice, easy to follow. It also had, I didn't mention this in the actual video because I only found it at the end, but it had uh, short instructions at the end for people who are more experienced with sewing, which is just like, do this, do this, do this, without all the comprehensive um, instructions, which I really like as well, so it's really adaptable. The pattern was lovely, the apron is gorgeous, I'm so so happy with it, um, and yeah, overall just really good. I'm really hoping this will be a versatile item. You can also wear it differently, so you can obviously like, you can fold it, turn it down, you can do different versions, I'm, I'm happy with it. And without further delay, here's the reveal.